The stealthy and very deadly Space Ninja and Tag has been added to the game. They are a mid-round antagonist that spawns somewhere in space next to the station. And very quick note, uh, you do not spawn with your oxygen tank turned on, so make sure you turn it on. The objectives are as follows. Steal an X amount of technologies from science. Doorjack an X number of doors on the station with your gloves. Hack the comms console. Survive. And there is typically a bombing objective, which I will also show. So how do you get to the station? It's pretty simple. You start with a pinpointer. All you have to do is turn it on. Turn on your jetpack and fly towards that direction. You start with an agent ID card, which means that you can access the common doors. But like, obviously I can't open command, but I can open any doors that like a passenger could basically, such as maintenance. Space Ninjas feature several different abilities to help them in their mission. They can emag doors with their gloves, which you just turn on the action on the side, left click a door, and it will emag it. They can dash through windows as long as they have line of sight by having a sword in their hand and pressing the uh, associated button, which is the katana dash. All you have to do is left click, and you'll instantly teleport to wherever you can actually see, but that means you can't go through walls and it'll say you can't see that. They also feature the ability to turn invisible, throw throwing stars, which they will also make, as well as the ability to EMP a large vicinity around them, and they are immune to EMPs themselves. They also feature a battery system in their suit, and in order, most abilities use this battery. Uh, Emagging doors does not, but to get it back, it's pretty simple. You could just walk up to an APC with your gloves on, click on it, and you'll just continually drain power from the APC, and once your suit is full, you will automatically stop draining. You do not feature any lights, and you can't see in the dark. You must be somewhat cautious when navigating through areas like maintenance, and you do not start with any lights in your bag, but you do start with a full set of tools. You are immune to flashes, and you are immune to EMPs. You also cannot slip, and you run extraordinarily fast, as you can probably see. Now I'm just going to demonstrate how to complete all the objectives. To hack the comms console is pretty simple. Just break into the bridge, and you just make sure your gloves are on. Simply left-click the comms console, and wait for this do after bar to finish. Once that is finished, there will be a message for the entire station that is a central command announcement, and it will basically either warn the station that a revenant is coming or a space dragon is coming. So that is a pretty dangerous thing to happen to the station. Also, due to the fact they have an agent ID card, you can just copy access directly from the captain if you were to able to like catch him, and then you just have all access and not need to emag everywhere because emagging is loud and can definitely give you away. Also, if you have your gloves on and simply left click somebody. You will instantly shock them, which as you can imagine, makes them very easy to kill. But if you have harm on, you can't shock them, so you could just give them a few little zaps and then kill them. And uh, yeah, you could basically chain CC somebody if you do it in that uh, manner. But it does take quite a lot of your suit power to do that, so I would use it. To steal technologies, all you must do is simply break into science and break into wherever the RD server is, which is usually behind a command door, and sometimes in the bedroom of the RD, sometimes in its own room. And just like the comms console, you simply just left-click it with your gloves on. Once this finishes, you will complete your objective if science has researched enough technology, and it will actually wipe all of the tech from science, so they'll effectively be at square one again once this finishes. You thankfully can't use the bomb anywhere that isn't the specified location so as long as you're in the right place you'll be able to plant it uh, by the way you can set the timer from anywhere from five seconds to 60 but it's probably better to do a shorter timer than a longer timer but yeah i basically have to blow up arrivals which is very unfortunate uh i would try to be courteous and not blow up the docking arm but as soon as that detonates you'll see it turn green and it does a pretty decent bit of damage. Like, it annihilated these walls. And that is the Space Ninja. Very awesome new antagonist. The Advanced Laser Pistol, or otherwise known as the Advanced Laser Rifle, has been moved to a Tier 3 research known as the Portable Microfusion Weaponry. That means that in order to get Advanced Lasers for the station, you lose access to the, all the other Tier 3s. So it is much more of a conscious decision and not something that should be seen every single round. Hacking Magazines has received a pretty nice quality of life, so if you have two half-empty mags, you can just 
left click on the other mag with the previous mag and it will actually load every single bullet at a time so you don't have to spam click a million times and the same thing is with a box of ammo uh unfortunately there's no sound effect for it but if you're going on the ground like this you can actually visually see the magazine filling so that's nice security tech fab cannot print out entire magazines once it is done they do indeed come filled so make sure you're paying attention to your resource cost but being able to print out full magazines saves a lot of clicking and micromanagement of like bullets and such the single target damage buff has been removed it is now the same as a wide swing, so with a knife that does 10 damage, a left click does 10 damage, and a right click wide swing also does 10 damage. The hypo spray has been updated so it can actually inject its reagents back into a beaker, so now you don't have to go inject them in the Walter or inject them in yourself or whatever. So this is a pretty nice quality of life in case you have your hypo spray preloaded with the incorrect medicine. Gauze has been buffed significantly to now heal a whopping 10 pierce and five slash per use so i would just use one gauze on myself and rescan to show you that it is significantly stronger than it used to be so let me rescan and as you can see yes i have healed significantly and just as a reminder you can craft gauze you just need to cloth at a time in your crafting menu so if you ever get stabbed or uh cut you can very easily heal yourself Radiation collectors actually now have a fuel source in the form of plasma in plasma tanks. Um, it doesn't like consume the plasma until it actually starts producing power. It will give you a fair bit of power for a while, so you don't have to change them out too frequently. Uh, this can be a new issue because, well, they're required for uh, the radiation collectors to actually make power. And a lot of stations have it so the radiation collectors are actually outside. So if you don't refill them, you will lose power if the only thing you're relying on is a singularity. It'll make it so that Atmos would need to keep refilling these plasma tanks with the miners. Um, or they could just use the plasma tank that I think every station starts with. But either way, they always have access to infinite plasma. So really, this just makes it so the singularity has upkeep and isn't just infinite power the moment it is turned on. Gas tanks now have valves on them, so you no longer have to stick them in, like, a pneumatic cannon to empty them. You can just right-click them and open the valve, and they do this cool thing where they fly around in random directions and have cool audio for it. So it's just a more fun way of emptying out a gas tank. Super matter grenades have been fixed, and that includes both the white hole grenade for 3TC and the super matter grenade for 6TC. The white hole grenade is not a lethal grenade, but when you activate it, It'll make this beeping sound, and what it does is it actually pushes everything away at a pretty strong velocity. As you can see, basically everything in this room got thrown away, and I have let go of my movement, and it keeps pushing you even when it's almost off screen. A super matter grenade is much, much more lethal. It does the opposite, where it actually pulls things in, and it pulls you in very, very aggressively. And once that's done, It will explode, and if you're caught within the area of effect, it will most likely kill you if you have no explosion resistance. But in my case, I got lucky and was thrown out of the way, so that kind of demonstrates its effectiveness at killing people. The Luxury Mining Hard Suit Crate has been added to the game. It is a $15,000 purchase. Finally, a hard suit quartermasters could call their own. CENTCOM has heard you, now stop asking. Inside the box is a singular Luxury Mining Hard Suit, and I'll put it on for you. It is basically a golden version of the mining hard suit. Uh, it fits the quartermaster's colors. I think it looks fantastic. And I might as well talk about the stats of it very quickly. The stats of the luxury mining hard suit are as follows. Only decreases your running speed by 10%. 50% uh, radiation, 20 pierce, 10 slash blunt. Uh, and it has the usual 50% explosion resistance. The helmet is 10% of the combat damage, except pierce, which is 5. But it does reduce radiation. Uh an extra percentage so it's good against radiation but it's not exactly breaking the bank in terms of statistics but you do move quite fast in it it's basically an armored eva suit gold uranium vanadium and silver ores have been changed to match the uh, design of the rest of the ores you not only need six ores of each in order to make a stack of either the respective material so six uranium ore will equal 30 uranium sheets 
as you can see, that conversion is true. Vanadium is a little different. Uh, Vanadium doesn't have the same stack as um, the rest of them. So the, it's actually six Vanadium ores for 10 Vanadium, but it's also a rare material. And while I'm here, as you can hear, Vanadium is more radioactive the more there is per stack. So if I just take half of it and delete it, uh, the radiation count drops significantly to the point that it's not even triggering my hard suit anymore. So that is something to be careful about. Bonnie plants have received a new mutation. They can now exude random gases. As you can see, this one just exuded water vapor, which is actually setting off the fire alarms. On top of that, they can also now gain random chemicals. I don't know if you even saw that one. That one is spitting out a plasma on its growth cycles. On top of this, botany plants can now also gain random reagents. And this one is spitting out a lot of water vapor. Oh, and there's plasma now. Just for reference, I mutated every single one of these plants with five units of unstable mutagen each. So you're probably seeing more gases here than you would see in your own botany lab, because uh, this is quite a lot of mutations. So as I will show you very quickly, this ambrosia plant actually now uh, has nicotine in it. So what you could do that's very interesting about this is I'll just grind it to show you. Indeed, there is now nicotine in it. So what you could do is you could take your uh, swabs like you would before. And if you swab this plant onto something like an alloy plant or something that just doesn't have nicotine in it, there is a chance that it will actually spread the nicotine into this plant. So through the usages of previous botany mutations, you can try making like super plants that are all medicinal, or you could try making pretty killer plants. Um, the chemicals it picks seems to be kind of random. So it's entirely possible you could even get something like an Omnizine farm out of this. Uh, obviously I can't, I, I'm not going to show you every single possible example because that would take forever. Botany is not a very fast process. But due to how swabbing plants works now, you can make some very, very interesting combinations between plants. Cognizine has been fixed to work on mobs that actually have players inside of them. So, for example, like if Pun Pun is just a normal monkey and can't actually talk, so see it just doesn't translate. Funnily enough, monkeys can actually self-inject themselves with Cognizine if they get their hands on it. After injecting themselves, they can now actually talk to you. So, monkeys might be able to uh, reach carry levels of intelligence on their own again. Their actins have lost their two extra hands, but they also have had their damage values pretty much reset to normal. And on top of that, they have gained access to additional web things, so now they can make things like web crates, web clothes, uh, yeah, pretty much anything. Like, there's quite a lot of different web objects here. You can make an entire web room. Supposed units can once again be emagged, and what that does is it just makes them silent. So you can use this for like stealthy entries or getaways. Thrusters have been changed. So a normal thruster will not obviously have its thrust upgraded, but if you were to RPED it with all blue space parts, its thrust speed will be increased by 237%, at least with my extra capacitor just to give it more of an upgrade. So even with just one blue space capacitor, it increases the strength by 35%. Obviously getting your hands on this many is not really practical. And to add on to this, shuttles have had their interactions with being very fast changed. You now basically like, you don't like start clipping out of existence if you go too fast, which the shuttle does not even really have that issue. So it's kind of hard to show it, but really, really fast shuttles should not have the same issue they did before. They kind of just stutter around. Armed nuclear bombs now actually produce light, and they will spin in a circle around the nuke, flashing between oranges and reds. Uh, this prevents hiding them in dark rooms, making them impossible to see, and like throwing crap on top of them. So now the nuke will always be visible, and I mean it makes sense that an armed nuclear bomb would have clear visuals. FTL hitchhikers are no longer as safe as they used to be. Uh, you're probably going to want to remain inside the vehicle. <laughs> As you can see, I got flung at a very, very rapid speed. And that is all I'll cover this week. It was a pretty large week. Seeing a new antagonist is always lovely. Also been some other really cool content additions, especially things like botany. Uh, quality of life still always coming in strong and always really appreciated and nice. I will slowly scroll through the change log so y'all that don't have access to it easily can pause and read through it. 
Wanted to thank all of our maintainers and contributors for all their lovely work to the game, keeping it up to date. And yeah, that is it.